Good afternoon, everybody. This is Rick Keyes with the Fresno Metro Black Chamber of Commerce. I want to give it a couple of minutes to make sure all our participants are able to join us before we get started. All right, let's get the ball rolling. So I wanna introduce you to our speaker today. His name is Marcus McGowan, and he is the owner of Modun Investments, LLC. So let me give you a little background on Marcus so you, you get a firm understanding as to why he is more than qualified to talk to us today about this subject. Marcus was born and raised in Oakland, California. After graduating from high school, he attended Chabot College, but left before earning his degree to pursue a professional baseball career. He played pro baseball for the Bend Bandits, the Western Baseball League in Bend, Oregon for four years. When that ended, Marcus held several positions within the game of baseball as a coach and an umpire until he found his true calling as an entrepreneur. Marcus McGowan established Muldoon's Investments, LLC, a personal credit counseling firm in 2010. As a credit consultant, Marcus helps individuals and companies across America with challenge or no credit establish good credit. He also teaches people the importance of having good credit score and how that can open many financial opportunities for individuals who wouldn't otherwise have them. Financial opportunities is what the chamber is about. So Marcus, we welcome you. We thank you for, for joining us today. He currently resides in Fresno, California, where he enjoys watching baseball and spending time with his family. So Marcus, welcome, and we're gonna turn it over to you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I hope everyone's having a, a wonderful Thursday, as I am. Um, you know, my, like I said, like Rick, thanks for the introduction. Um, I've been doing this. I've been in the credit repair industry for roughly about six to seven years. Uh, um, spent a few years studying um, the different dynamics of having credit because, not, you know, this is something that it's not taught in school. And this is something that should be taught in school, along with financial literacy and other things that we can use as a tool moving forward. And you know, I just enjoy doing what I do and let's get it started. So basically my company's Modunes Investments LLC. I'm located downtown in the Patterson building, um, right by the old Club One off of Tulare and Fulton. What we do, um, we basically, um, I'm a consultant. So I basically help people establish credit um, and show them the different ways to once you have uh, good credit, you know, to maintain good credit. And basically, we'll take a look at your credit report, find out what's holding you back, the negative items that you have, and basically give you your options on how to move forward and get these things removed, or possibly sometimes you might have to settle with the creditors 
because a lot of times, especially now with the pandemic going on, what I've noticed lately, a lot of people are being sued by a lot of these banks. Um, and it's just something that happens. And there's, you know, I always try to explain to people that you can't go to jail for not paying your bills. These, there's a lot of uh, shady uh, collection agencies out there that are trying to call you and threaten you and say they have the police outside your job and try to force you to make a payment right then and there. You know, don't do it. You can't go to jail for not paying your bills. You can always tell them to stop harassing you. And we'll get into that later. There's always ways to get around it and basically try to help you get pointed in the right direction and, and you know, basically getting your name back in good standing. What is credit? Credit is the ability to borrow money and access goods or services with the understanding that you will pay it back later. Lenders grant credit based on your credit worthiness. What this entails is basically your name and your social security number. Um, that's basically what they're using. And once they pull your number, they find out what your credit rating is. So it's like everyone's a, a number, just like when we're born, we're issued a social security number. Your birth certificate is a document that basically says, hey, this person is a living being. And you're, even though a lot of people don't realize your, your birth certificate, I do believe is traded on the stock market and they use it, the banks use it as money. What are the types of credit? There's revolving credit, service credit, and installment credit. Revolving credit would be your credit cards. If you have a credit card, um, uh, that's what a lot of people don't understand when it comes to credit and how it works. If you have a credit card that's a $5,000 limit and you're using 2,500 of it when it's reported to the credit bureaus, you're using 50%. The magic number, I don't make this stuff up. This is what they do in the credit world or the banking industry. They want you to have your, um, your revolving credit balance under 30%. I always say try to keep it under 10% to achieve the highest credit score. Some people like to pay things off and have it at a zero balance, which is fine also. You'll hear different people that are in the industry tell you to you know, pay it off. Some people say, oh, keep a balance. Well, you really don't want to keep a balance on a credit card because then you're going to end up paying interest on a balance. If you owe money, you're going to end up paying interest. Then you have service credit, which can be anything from like, say, for instance, if you have, a, um, uh, you get tires at a tire shop and you, you have them run your credit and you get a, a service credit card. And then installment credit would be a car loan, any type of bank uh, loan that you get from a bank is an installment. And it's the difference between revolving and credit, revolving the, the balance can fluctuate or the payment will fluctuate. So your payment this month, you may owe 50 bucks. The next month you may owe 150. Well, installment, the credit, the balance or the payment is going to be the same every month. So your car payment is going to be the same every month. You can always pay more if you want to, but the payment is gonna be the same and it's not gonna affect your, your credit score as revolving credit would. So you always, when you're thinking about your credit card, you always wanna keep it under 30%. Like I say, you can pay it down a little bit more if you want to, but you definitely wanna keep it under 30% and pay it off. If your due date is the first of the month, pay it off a couple of days before the first. So once it's reported to the credit bureaus, you wanna make sure you don't run it back up before they report to the bureaus. Otherwise, you're not gonna see a, a difference in the balance. Cause a lot of people will say, hey, I paid off my credit card, but then um, my scores didn't move. And they went and charged the credit card back up before it was actually reported to the credit bureaus. So it didn't really reflect that they paid the balance down. That's one of the tricks of the trade. How does credit work? Well, this is a sample of a credit report. Up here, you can see you have your name, the current address, city and state. You have the social security number, your date of birth, and your telephone number. By law, the only thing that needs to be on your credit report is your name, your current address, 
not even your social. They shouldn't even have your social on there. If you pull your, if you get a mortgage credit report, the mortgage credit report will have your social. Um, Experian, I don't do, I don't believe that they have any. Um, if you get your credit report in the mail from Experian, I do believe on one of the back pages it may have the last four of your social, but we, you will rarely see the full social security number on the credit report. That's why when you do have a credit report sent to you, if you ever dispute anything on your own and they send you a credit report, you want to make sure you always have your current address because if your ad, if your credit report falls into the wrong hands and it ends up with an identity thief, they can go to town and that's how a lot of people get hurt because their 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 credit gets ruined. And you don't necessarily have a phone number, have to have a phone number in your credit file. If you do have a type of fraud alert on your file, it's good to have your phone number. So if you do apply for credit, they know how to contact you. Um, you don't necessarily have to have your employer or your, your position or your occupation on your credit report, because if you do get behind on payments or a collection agency, a collection shows up in your file, they can just pull your credit report and see where you work. And that's how a lot of times they end up calling you and harassing you and showing up at your job. Now the public records information is right here. And this person has a, looks like they had a tax lien. This is how you find out if you have any type of tax liens or bankruptcies or any type of judgments. Now they did pass a law a couple of years ago that they weren't gonna report tax liens and judgments on your credit report anymore. Um, bankruptcies will still be reported, but if you go to purchase a home or you go to refinance a house, if you're a homeowner already, you will find out that the underwriters will find out if you have any public records, they can see it. They pull from a totally different platform than if we pull your credit report or if we pulled it ourselves, and you paid um, a credit monitoring service to take a look at your credit report you won't see any of the public records there. You may, if you have bankruptcy, you'll see that. But as far as the tax liens and judgments, you won't see it. Um, collection agencies information is always, oops, it's always there. You can see it. Now, this is how you would be able to read to find out what collection agency is reporting. This one is called Pro Collection. And then it has the abbreviations of the account number. And then it was reported on 5-7. Then it was assigned September the 4th. And it's saying that the amount was 978 bucks. The original creditor was ABC Hospital. So a lot of times what happens is a lot of people have no idea that they have these accounts until they show up on their credit report. But if it's a collection agency, you always want to look to see who the original creditor is. So if you know that you've never gone to ABC hospital, whoops. If you know you've never gone to ABC hospital, then most likely that's not your account. And you should probably contact, you can always contact the uh, collection agency first, or you could contact um, the credit bureaus and, and dispute the account on your own. And this is the payment history on the accounts that they have right here. It shows a department store, a bank, oil company, auto finance, so there's always a lot of stuff that you can find out about someone by just looking at the credit report, if they pay their bills on time or not. Here's the FICO score. Now, this is where the fun part, this is where we have to, you know, basically have to look at ourselves and say, hey, you know, I don't want to be in this area or this area. You know, it's just a number, but it's, it's about developing smart habits. Um, if your scores are in the, the low fours or high fives or, you know, you want to work on getting it up and it's not the end of the world, but you just have to basically accept, you know, what's going on and address the issue and don't ignore it because this day and age, there's not much you can do with bad credit. You always want to try to be in the 720 to the, you know, in the green you know, because this is where you want to be. This is where you're going to get the best interest rates. The interest rates are not going to be that far off um, if you have good credit and excellent, because usually when you get around 760 and above, the interest rates are going to be pretty much kind of be the same. But you'll see a big difference if your scores are in the 
660 to you know 580 somewhere around there you're going to end up paying more money if you do finance something you're going to pay you're going to end up paying more money because a lot of times when you try to get a vehicle you know if you have good credit they'll be happy to give you a vehicle with no money down but if you don't have good credit then that's all of a sudden that's when they start asking can you put a money down on the car and that's why i try to educate my clients on how to and try to show them how to never put money down and finance a car there's always options there's a lot of banks out there that if you build your credit up the right way and spend the money on repairing your credit there's ways to go about achieving you know buying a house or getting a car or, or getting a loan to to start your own business and what can affect your fico score well this is the pie chart 35% of your credit score is based on payment history. 30% is amounts owed. 15% is length of credit history. 10% is uh, 10, uh, new credit. And 10% is type of credit used. Now, the types of credit you use would be if you have um, revolving. Um, your mortgage, if you happen to have a mortgage, would be pretty much like it's a mortgage loan, but it, it kind of falls into the category like an installment because the payment is gonna be the same every month. Um, and then you always wanna make sure that you try to pay down the amounts that you owe. If you have any credit cards that have high balances, try to pay those down because that's what's gonna help your scores go up the fastest. If you have multiple credit cards, but you owe high balances, try to knock them down. You know, try to say, okay, I'm going to concentrate. If you have five credit cards that have high balances, say, okay, this month I'm going to concentrate on uh, two credit cards and try to get those under 30% and just make the minimum payment on the other ones. And then the following month, try to knock those down because that's the quickest way to see your scores shoot up if you have balances and you have high balances on your credit cards because the installment loan, the mortgage, the car notes, those are going to stay the same. Personal loans, those payments are going to stay the same. You can always pay a little bit more, but it's not going to help your scores go up any faster. Why is good credit important? Good credit equals more. More loans, less interest, uh, more job opportunities, more goods and services. Um, when you have good credit, basically, they try to roll out the red carpet for you because you have to be disciplined. Um, it's a good feeling when you can walk into any bank, even though you don't bank there and you just say, Hey, um, I want a loan and they're looking at you sideways. And then all of a sudden they run your credit and you got a 760 credit score, or you got an 800 credit score. Then all of a sudden that, that, that teller or that, you know, who, who works at the bank, they become real friendly all of a sudden. How do you establish good credit? Well, payment history is key. Debt ratio, uh, authorized users. A lot of people don't understand what an authorized user is. An authorized user, say for instance, if I have a credit card and I'm trying to help my daughter build up her credit, I can add her on my credit card as an authorized user. Now it's up to me if I want her to have that credit card but I don't recommend it because you just basically want to add her to the account to help her build up her credit. And that's what a lot of people do. That's how a lot of kids, when they get out of high school, all of a sudden they have a, seven, a 750 credit score because if the parents know anything about credit, they know how to give the kids a leg up and they can add them to credit cards. The credit cards will be older than the kids. And an authorized user will only help you if it has good history, um, usually more than two years old, zero to low balance on the credit card with zero late payments. You don't wanna have any late payments. Um, you can have uh, a co-signer. You can always consider a co-signer. I don't recommend it um, because if that co-signer, if you're the co-signer for somebody's car and they miss a couple payments, well, that that car note, that, that trade line is on your credit report. So if that trade line all of a sudden reflects a late payment, your scores are going to drop. And you have no idea that, you know, your daughter was late on the payment. That's why I always recommend never becoming a co-signer.
Uh, secured cards. Secured cards work well. Um, you can always get a secured card through the banks. Um, sometimes the way the secured card works, if you have a, say you bank at Wells Fargo and you're trying to build your credit up, you get a secured card, you basically put a, de a deposit down, 500 bucks, and it's collateral. After you establish a relationship of paying your um, credit card on time, because it's just like a credit card, but it's just secured by the 500 bucks you put in the bank. And usually after about six months, some banks are different. Some of them make you wait a year. If you do well with a secured card, um, after about a year, they'll send you your deposit back and then they'll send you an unsecured card. Banking relationships. A lot of people, oops, a lot of people get in trouble and they may have a banking account that was closed because they had an overdraft fee and they didn't pay it on time. And then they end up in check systems. Well, you can sit in check systems for five years. It's best to find out if you are in check systems and handle the situation and try to get it taken care of as soon as possible. Because once you have these banking relationships, there's a lot of information that's out there that a lot of people don't know. There's, um, Everybody knows about the three big bureaus, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. But there's other companies out there, LexisNexis, SageStream, Innovis. They have all this information on you. And if you think I'm lying, order your LexisNexis report, and you'll be amazed what it is on that report. It'll have information on there that it'll have people on your report that you don't have any idea how they end up on your report, but they can be related to you through someone else. Also credit for bills that you pay. Um, this one right here, um, you get credit for paying certain bills. I don't recommend, uh, I got a good friend who's a loan officer and he owns his real estate, own real estate company. I know you guys see the commercials with Experian Boost um, where you can pay um, your pg and &E bill and they give you credit for it. You can pay your rent. They give, it credit, give you credit for it on your credit report, but it only reports to Experian. And what I've noticed is that a lot of times when those trade lines are showing up in your credit report, they have a real funny um, statement next to them. So even though it's supposed to be helping you, it's like adding to your debt for some reason. And I don't know why it is, but you just always want to be careful using that Experian boost and how we can help you. Basically what we do is we analyze the credit report, figure out um, what you have on there that's holding you back. Then we determine a plan of action. When then we figure out how to go after challenging the errors and the negative items. Then we monitor the results and then we give you the tools to maintain um, healthy credit habits. Because of what happens a lot of times, a lot of people don't realize that they, you know, they pay for our services, but then they don't follow up. They figure, hey, I paid this guy to help me with my credit. I don't need to do anything. I'll just sit back and wait. But you have to let me know when you get the results so we can know what we need to do, because it's not something that happens overnight. Yes, we get good results, but, you know, my clients, they have to make sure they do their part and let us know when they do get their results in. So if, say, for instance, you have five negative items on your file and three of them get removed the first round and you still have two more. Now I have to go revise the paperwork so I don't sit there and dispute the other items that had already been disputed and got deleted. And I only have to focus on those other two because the less items that you have to dispute on a credit report, the better chance you'll have to get those items removed in a timely manner. Uh, this is my contact information. Um, this is my, my office number, 559-334-3787. This is my email address, moldoonsinvestments at yahoo.com. And this is my website, moldoonsinvestments.com. I appreciate everybody that's on the line. Um, I'm going to give it back to Rick and Shatar. So if you guys have any questions, I see one Q&A. Um, and thanks for listening. And I'm open. Open for questions. Thank you, Marcus. If you could answer that one question, the Q&A to get started, that'd be great. Okay. So the question is, what can you do with high student loans? It affects the person's credit history despite credits. 
Is there a way to show and not being hurt by it? That's a good question because right now, I know when Biden got into office, they've been trying to work on um, doing something about the student loans because student loans have been hurting people for years. Um, there's always way to, ways to challenge student loans and try to you know, get the, um, the, the credit bureaus not to report them, but it's always tough because whenever you sign something and it, we know it's yours, it's hard to fight it. But anything, anything can be disputed on a credit report. Um, if we do get the student loans removed from your credit report, it doesn't mean you don't owe it. You still owe it. But if it's not reported in your credit report, of course, it would look a little bit better on your credit because it's not, it's not working against you as far as debt that's owed. I have a couple of questions uh, mm -hmm. for you that uh, I, I don't know if many people were aware of this. Is there a statute of limitations for debt in the state of California? The statute of limitations in the state of California is four years. Now, with that being said, the statute of limitations is when the last, it, it, the clock starts ticking when the last payment was made. So sometimes what happens is a lot of people will um, come to me about an account they had several years ago and they said, oh, that, that account was old. I opened that account in 2010. And I look at their credit report and I say, yeah, you're right. You opened it in 2010, but the last time you made a payment on the account was 2017. So the clock starts ticking in 2017. So once that happens, now if you're outside the statute of limitations as far as the creditor trying to sue you, you know, that, that helps the case a little bit better because whenever you're outside the statute of limitations, because a lot of the times what happens is a lot of people have new debt that went sideways. So all of a sudden they have a charged off credit card that just got charged off last year when the pandemic hit. Well, if you start, if I start disputing with the creditors um, about that account, they may say, well, you're trying to, you're just trying to get away with not paying. So they may tell their attorneys, hey, go after this person. Now we open up a can of worms. You know, you can always try to settle before it gets to that point and work out something, you know, sometimes just giving them 20 bucks a month just to stop them from, um, you know, damaging your credit even worse is worth it. And just try to work on, you know, sometimes you just have to work on one account at a time to just try to figure out the best way to get your credit back in good standing. But when you have a lot of accounts, it, it can be challenging. There's a question uh, here and, and maybe this is something you can answer at the end. And they wanna know how much your fees are for conducting credit analysis on someone's credit reports. So if you can hold charge on to anything. that answer. Yeah, we don't, we don't charge anything to, um, to look at the credit report. Um, I know there's companies out there that charge. I don't charge. I've never, never charged anyone. I've had people try to pay me just to look at the report. I go, you know, I'm not greedy. Um, Cause I can look at your report in a matter of five minutes and tell you what needs to be done. Um, what I do try to do when I um, do look at a credit report is I try to have the client sign up for one of the monitoring services that I use for my software and review the credit report before they come into my office if they decide to come in because you know we're very busy. So I don't like to waste people's time and I don't like people wasting my time. So if they do allow me to look at their report ahead of time, it just makes it a lot easier. Another question is, is do you suggest that people pull their credit before they plan to make a, a major purchase? Oh, definitely, definitely. Right now, um, even if you don't have a credit monitoring service, because a lot of people will say that, you know, they use Credit Karma. Credit Karma is not 100% accurate. Um, so you can, what the credit bureaus um, have allowed the past uh, year with the pandemic is they allow, because before annual credit report, you were allowed to pull your annual credit report once a year. But once the pandemic hit, they started allowing you to pull your 
your annual credit report once a week. And then they extended it uh, a couple months ago um, until April of 2022, where you can pull your annual credit report once a week. Now, with that being said, you want to make sure that all the information is accurate. Because a lot of times, people, you know, people move around and they don't update their information with the credit bureau. So if they try to pull the annual credit report and they're using an address that they moved to just two months ago, and there's no creditors that are using that address and they put their new address in, they're probably not going to be able to generate that report. They may have to use an old address that they just moved from or an address that they know is on the credit report because their car loan is linked to that address or it was a bad account that they had. It was a credit card that got charged off five years ago that is linked to that address. You want to use that address just to be able to pull your report. That way you can see what's on there, but you always want to make sure you update your report and stay on top of that stuff as far as the addresses and phone numbers and employment history and stuff like that. Because um, if it, your information is going to the wrong address, you might have moved two years ago and the credit bureaus are still, somebody tried to send you something and it goes to the wrong address. Now, Joe Blow, who's the uh, identity thief, has your information. He's got everything on you. So then actually, you know, you start getting these calls from these creditors saying, hey, you opened up an account and you never paid it. You owe us and you have no idea. Now that's another can of worms. So now you're victim identity theft. Now you basically have to prove to the bureaus and to these companies that you didn't actually open those accounts. So Marcus, can you give an example of circumstances the feds, uh, when the feds don't report student loans or, or the credit agencies and what the rationale is? Well, you know, when it comes to the, the, the student loans, because I deal with uh, a lot of different people um, in the industry and a lot of uh, guys that are been doing this for a, lot, a while and they focus on the student loans. Um, that's, that's basically what they focus on. A lot of times when, when people have student loans, I don't like touching them because I don't want to open up a can of worms and, you know, somebody says, well, you know, I opened these student loans two years ago and, and, and I, I, I have them in deferment and, you know, it, it's killing me. I can't afford to pay them or whatever. You want to reach out to whoever the, um, if it's, Fannie Mae or not Fannie Mae, but what's the Navy in or something like that, because a lot of these student loan places are going belly up and some of them are in trouble. So you really need, especially if it's a school that's a student loan that um, they're no longer in existence. You sometimes you can get away with just a normal dispute being sent in regarding that student loan because that school is closed now. So I've seen student loans get deleted that way. You know, there's always different angles to go after these student loans. I just, you know, just once I look at it and find out, hey, where was the school? Is it university? Was it Fresno State? Was it, you know, Phoenix University or something like that? Because there's a lot of schools out there that they basically kind of much, pretty much suckered people in getting student loans and they're no longer in existence. So those are the ones that are easier to get removed and get deleted and may not possibly, may not have to even pay it. So is there a way to get your credit report online instead of having it mailed to you? Yes, you can um, go to annualcreditreport.com and you basically what you have to do is just go once you, because there's sometimes a lot of people will go to annualcreditreport.com and they'll click on the wrong link. Um, let me see if I can, find the actual screen, make this small.
I want to share the annual credit report screen so that way you can see the right website. I just I just type type it into the chat box because yeah that'll I'll work it, that way. I, I can tell you this. I, I've gone on that website myself and done that. Yeah, that's the quickest way. And to and, and and it it uh, it's it's pretty simple. Um, I definitely didn't have any complications. I, I think there's only one instance that I've ever heard of where you had to opt to have it mailed to you. Now it's as if there was an address conflict. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, does that does that sound accurate to you? Yes, it happens a lot, and that's why it's it's crucial to make sure you have your um, your address correct on your credit report. Because I mean, I've seen the credit bureaus. I, I've seen the address correct on the credit report, and the bureaus still send the the credit report to the wrong address. Sometimes that you can call them, and it's probably easier to call them um, sometimes the best time to call the credit bureaus is first thing in the morning a lot of times you'll get someone overseas because um, when the pandemic hit it really slowed things down on the on the credit report side or the credit reporting side as far as getting results because they weren't working at the office wherever they work at because a lot of the work that's been done is overseas in the Philippines and in India and in Costa Rica. And when the pandemic hit, they were working from home. So I think what happened was a lot of a lot of the employees weren't being watched. So they weren't processing disputes and everything. Um, but I think they're now they're starting to I spoke with a representative at TransUnion a couple of weeks ago and and it was real loud in the background. And I said, Hey, where are you at? And they were like, Oh, we're we're back to full strength now. And I know that a lot of um, associates that I deal with in an industry, they're starting to see better results now um, than before. And I think it's because they're starting to uh, get back to um, processing disputes in a timely manner opposed to before. Um, next question is, I have great credit except my large student loan debts. Hold up my credit and I can't get a business loan because of that. Not that I didn't pay, the amount is just too big. Bigger than the traditional 30% mm -hmm. use credits. What can I do about it? Well, the first thing you wanna do is try to, um, we wanna try to attack and try to get those student loans off of there because there's ways of getting student loans removed. Um, one, you know, basically there's two ways. One is legal and one is not. <laughs> So a lot of people will say they don't care, but, you know, I, I try to do things by the book because I don't want anybody getting in trouble. And it's just, you know, it's basically about trying to just do the right thing about educating the client and letting them know. And, and then possibly, you know, sometimes you can work with the student loan um, companies and say, hey, check this out. You know, I went to school here and, you know, I'm not saying that I didn't take out the loan but I, I can't I can't pay you back right now and and you know I'm trying to work and I'm trying to get a loan for you know I'm starting up my business and this is is, is hurting me you know is there anything you, that you guys can can do to try to help me and sometimes they'll, they'll try to work with you um, sometimes you can try to get them to just remove the trade line off the credit report but you continue of course you continue to pay them because if that thing is not showing, it's going to help you big time as far as trying to achieve a loan. And uh, you see a lot of people that have 
those student loans and it, it, it's killing them. Okay, I'm, I'm typing something in the chat in relation to that question. For those who are attending, if you're a business owner or you want, a, want to start a business, um, if you haven't heard of the Kiva loan, that is now available in Fresno. And it just so happens that the chamber is the hub for that. You can apply for a Kiva loan and the determination of approval is not based upon your credit score. So there's other factors involved. It's a very, very simple process. You don't even have to submit a driver's license identification. <laughs> wow. So it, it, yeah, it's, it's a very unique program. I am the person that happens to manage that. I'm gonna put my email address in there in the, in the chat. And if you have any interest in finding out more information, contact me and then we'll get you connected. And then, you know, the, another downside about the student loans too is because, um, you know, when it comes to your tax returns and if you owe those student loans, you owe money, you're not going to receive a uh, uh, tax return because they're going to take that money every year. So another question was, is there a particular service you recommend uh, to, to purchase for, to protect yourself against identity theft or fraud? There's nothing you need to purchase. Um, to protect yourself from fraud, you can all you can always put a fraud alert on your credit file. It's free. You can go to each credit bureau um, and put the fraud alert on there. And you can all you always want to make sure they have the correct information. They have the correct phone number. So if you do decide to take out credit, or you want to apply for something, and say you're applying for a credit card, and the credit card shouldn't you should not automatically be approved. It should have to go through a, a cycle as far as they should have to call and contact to make sure that it is you, Rick, that's applying for this credit card. And it's not someone else who got a hold of your information. Because you know, you have to be really be careful nowadays because you know these hackers are, man, they're everywhere and they're very savvy. And I've I've seen um, people that were they could actually clone your phone and they can clone your phone number. So then when the, the creditors call to verify that it's you applying for this credit card, it rings to their phone, not your phone. You never receive a call and they have all your information so they can pass the security questions and you have no idea. I knew a guy years ago um, and he was a real life identity thief. And I was just like, how can you know, how can you live that way? But he didn't care. And of course he's locked up now because I knew it was gonna catch up to him, but he would get people's information and he would just go crazy with it. But it, it finally caught up to him. We'll leave it open here for, for a couple of minutes for any other questions. So we have one that says, how, how hacker created email addresses on someone else's names and sending email. I got a lot of emails that way and it's shown I emailed to myself and why. Yeah, um, somebody must have. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> that's really not a, a credit question. Um, well, I mean, I could answer because a lot of times, if you don't if you don't protect your um, your computers or your phones, that's why I try I try not to log into my my bank accounts on my phone. Um, you always want to protect your your you know your devices, either your computer or your phone, because if you're logging in and you're logging in and you're at Starbucks and it's not a secure channel. Well, these hackers may be able to get that information and, and they can log in and they might find a lot of information on you and they may be creating new emails. 
I mean, it's just, I mean, we get spam calls all the time, get emails all the time, and you just got to really be careful. Um, one of the, um, what is it called? It's a VPN um, that I use. My, my, a buddy of mine works for Apple, and this is what they use. It's called Private Internet Access. And you can have it on multiple devices. It, it, it's not that expensive, um, but it can protect your, your phone, your computers from, you know, when people are trying to log in and try to, you know, get your information, you can protect yourself. Okay, I, I'm, I'm clicking over to the Q&A. Um, I, I missed this one. It says, what's the best approach to paying down credit? Highest APR first, lowest amount, highest amounts. Um, I would, if, if I was paying down my credit cards, I would always, you know, try to pay down the one with the highest balance to try to pay that, knock that one out first. Um, the lower amounts, I just, you know, just make sure you're making at least a minimum payment a month and, you know, because you don't want to get any late payments because the late payments kill you. They, they, they make your, I've seen one 30 day late drop your score 50, 60 points for one 30 day late. So if, even if you can't afford to pay it, pay it all the way off or pay it down more, just try to make the minimum payment. Um, here's another question. Somebody started the dispute process. Within the last couple of months, I've been sending letters to the bureaus and the creditors requesting them to verify and valid, validate that I'm the owner of the debt, requesting my signature to prove that I sign as a responsible party. They haven't been responsive in producing the paperwork, just keep saying the debt is verified. What would you suggest that I do at this point? That's a good question because they will never send you anything um, basically saying, well, we have proof that the debt belongs to you. There's a lot of credit gurus out there that tell you to do this or do that. You know, they, they, there's the supercomputers that they use. It's called eOscar. So if you're not doing your part as far as before you start the dispute process, and that's what a lot of people don't understand, there's steps to when you're disputing. And when you start asking for them to verify and validate, they're just going to ignore it. They're going to they're going to come back and they're going to you know say that it's yours. They're going to most of the time. Sometimes you can get lucky and get stuff deleted, but most of the time it's going to come back verified every time. Because if you're requesting that you see proof that there's a signature on there that you signed for it, they don't have that. You know they don't have that type of proof, and. You know, when you're setting up the, you know, basically like the end game, because I've been approached by um, uh, associate who's out of, um, he's out of Texas. And basically what they're doing is they're basically setting the uh, credit bureaus and the creditors up to sue them. Because like you're doing, you're basically sending in something to verify and validate. Well, that's a good step. You know, you, you're, going, you're going the right direction, you're doing it the right way, but they're never going to be able to produce that. So if you don't have the right steps to your next move, so it's like playing checkers or chess, you have to have this set up to make the next move. And if you don't know what your next move is, you're going to get stuck every time. A lot of these guys that I, that I associate with, they, that's all the attorneys. I have credit repair attorneys on speed dial. So if I get to a point where I'm, I'm tired of trying to fight uh, something for a client, I'll just send them to my attorney and let my attorney deal with it. And they'll sue the creditor. As long as you got proof showing that you sent in this, they didn't respond. You sent in that, they didn't respond. So now they're violating your rights. There's a lot of um, legal rights and you know, with the FDRA and all that other stuff that a lot of people don't understand. If you ever look at your credit card statement and you look at the fine print, the, the print that you probably need a magnified glass to look at. And that's why a lot of times a lot of the, the, the guys in the credit repair industry, they frown upon uh, disputing items online 
because they don't tell you, you know, they tell you, oh, you can dispute stuff online and we think it's faster. But when you do that, sometimes you lose some of your rights. You might lose your rights to sue them if they don't, um, you know, do what you, you want them to do. That's great information. That is fantastic information. Let's see here. Well, if we don't have any more questions, oh wait, I think we got one. Hold on. Oh, okay. <laughs> just a <to> reply. <laughs> oh yeah, just be, you're welcome. Marcus, we want to thank you. It's been a, a wealth of information that you provided for us. And uh, everybody that's on the call, if you haven't jotted down this contact information, uh, please make sure you do. We're gonna leave this up on the screen for a couple of minutes before we, uh, before we end the webinar. But uh, Marcus, thank you once again. And this information, uh, at some point in time, we will be posting this on our website for you to go back and go through a review. And uh, Marcus, again, he is available. If you, uh, for some reason, get your, didn't get your, your questions answered or something came up or you need help, feel free to contact him. Great thing is he's local and he's ready to serve. So Marcus, thank you again. Thank you, Rick, appreciate it. Anytime, just like Rick said, you know, my email is right there. You can send me an email if you have a question. You know, don't be shy because a lot of people, um, they're, you know, bashful about because they have credit issues. But I've been there. I was that guy on the other side of the desk that had challenged credit. And I, I learned this, this game and, you know, and I love what I do and I love helping people. Um, I was speaking with a client earlier today. He's in Texas because I have clients all over the nation. And he's in Texas and he was telling me that his, you know, I helped his wife out a year ago and a lot of his family members. And he was telling me that they all bought houses and everything. And I said, oh, that's a good thing. And, you know, a lot of times I don't hear from these people, you know, once, once, you know, they're able to get what they need to get. I don't hear from them. I don't expect to hear from them, but, you know, sometimes no news is good news. So that means when they came to me and I performed what I had to perform for them, it worked and they were able to purchase a house or purchase a car. And, you know, it's not everyone's going to be happy. I mean, I've probably refunded probably out of uh, about 2000 files I've worked on. I probably had to give a refund maybe three or four times over the years. And that was just because the client wasn't happy. They didn't have realistic goals and they thought it was something that happened overnight. And it doesn't work that way. All right. So we want to thank all of you participants who joined us today. Keep checking your, your emails and, and look for our newsletter. We have more content coming up in future webinars. So this is Rick Keys with the Fresno Metro Black Chamber of Commerce signing off. Have a great day. <laughs>